Hello everyone, this is Keith here, aka Girl Squad 57 and today I'm going to be showcasing uh, the Steam Controller playing some PS1 games using a PS1 emulator. Now the first section of this video is going to be me sort of explaining how to get it all set up and the sec uh, second section is actually going to be me playing a PlayStation 1 game with the Steam Controller. Um, so yeah, anyway, let's just go ahead and jump right in. Uh, yeah, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to actually download a PlayStation 1 emulator. Uh, if you're using Linux like I am, um, you all you really have to do is search your repositories for an emulator that you think would be a good one uh, and then use your package repositories to download it. Uh, in a Ubuntu based system or a Debian based system rather you can do this with apt-get install uh, and then the package name itself. Uh, if you're using SteamOS, there is a bit more you have to do. You actually have to enable extra repositories. I'm not going to go over that in this video, uh, but yeah, if you use SteamOS, just look up on Google or on YouTube rather uh, how to enable repositories in SteamOS, and I'm sure you'll find a bunch of videos on how to do that. Okay, so after you've found an emulator and you've downloaded it and you've uh, launched it in desktop mode and you've uh, ripped the BIOS and you know you found a game to test out and you've uh, did all that it's time to add it to the Steam library now the way you add this to your Steam library in big picture mode you can do this by going up to this gear here and under system there's a add library shortcut option and uh, when you click on this what it'll do is it'll give you a sort of list of applications in the uh, desktop shortcut directory uh, and all you have to do is find the PlayStation 1 emulator you just downloaded and uh, tap on it and add it to the list. Now I already have uh, emu my emulator of choice on here so there's nothing really uh, it's not going to show up in here. Uh, interestingly enough at one point Vim showed up on here and I just thought that'd be funny you know Vim with a Steam control that's an interesting idea. Uh, and then you can pretty much add anything that's in your shortcuts folder. You know, you can add a uh, Google Chrome, FreeCiv, whatever you like. Uh, so yeah, once you have that in your library, go ahead and go up to library, and it should show up. Now, if you if you're having trouble finding it, one thing you can do is you can hit uh, Y uh, under installed or recent, and then uh, hit narrow by name, and then just begin to type in the uh, application's name, and you should be able to find it no problem. Uh, so yeah, once you've selected the application from your library, a lot of people will automatically assume you're going to want to control a configuration prior to launching the application. Well, here's the thing. At least uh, with applications like this that don't use, uh, I guess, 3D uh, acceleration when you first launch them, whatever setting you set in control configuration will not work immediately. You have to actually wait until a game is started that whatever uh, options you apply actually matter. Uh, I'm going to show and explain this to you guys once we launch the application. So yeah, here is a PCSXR. This is my emulator choice just because I find it to be a, a good emulator. Um, and yeah, what you're going to one thing you'll notice is that, you know, if I move this around, it's still set to emulate the uh, mouse and keyboard. It doesn't actually uh, seem to follow the settings we put in controller configuration. Uh, that's just because the uh, the Steam controller configurations seem to be p tied to uh, Steam Big Picture Mode and the Big Picture Mode overlay. There was an update recently that they're sort of getting around that. Uh, but yeah, until you launch an actual 3D application, uh, the Steam uh, configurations will not actually load for that application. So in other words, when we first launch PCSXR, it's going to use our desktop configuration, which if we go into settings here and go under configurations, you'll see desktop configuration. And this is set to emulate the mouse and keyboard. So if we go to controller settings for our emulator, I, I do apologize for any screen flickering, by the way. I have to use OBS for this, uh, and it's really buggy with Steam for some reason. Uh, but yeah, so if we go to start mapping these keys, it'll see it as uh, like scroll wheel and up arrow and down arrow, and we don't want that. We want it to, to uh, map joystick keys, uh, buttons rather. Uh, so what we do is, I'm gonna move this stuff to a different desktop to get that out of the way for now. So what we have to do is we have to go to our desktop configuration, once again, the gear up here, configurations, desktop configuration. We're gonna wanna have to hit X, and then under templates, select gamepad. 
This will say for any desktop application, uh, whenever the Steam Controller button, you know, the buttons are mapped to uh, basically emulate an Xbox. So that way, when we go back into our uh, emulator here, when we actually go to change and hit a button, it'll actually work properly. So that's what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to set your desktop configuration to gamepad, and then you're going to want to go into your emulator's controller settings and set up your controller to uh, all the buttons and stuff. Some emulators uh, may require you to select a device from a drop down menu, and this is what the uh, Steam controller is detected as, as a Microsoft Xbox 360 pad. So if you have multiple controllers, that's what you should look for. You know, that's sort of a generic name. Anyway, yeah, so yeah, then you just go ahead and map the buttons like you would. Uh, quick note pressing L3 popped up, uh, pressing the left stick and popped up this weird big picture mode keyboard. I just went ahead and uh, moved my mouse to the bottom and then clicked OK and it closed that menu and it, the emulator did get the key so it seems to be fine. You know, it wasn't really that big of an issue, but it's just a weird thing that happened to me. Uh, and yeah, and once you have everything sort of mapped, you can actually go back into your desktop configuration under your Steam settings and set that back to mouse and keyboard because we only had to uh, sort of set that up temporarily so we can map all the keys to the uh, to the emulator so that way when we launch a game it knows that B is B, you know. So anyway, yeah, uh, once you have those keys mapped, congratulations, you can actually start officially uh, playing in a game now. Uh, so yeah, once you find an ISO of a game, um, I'm using Mega Man uh, X6 just because I originally I did Resident Evil, but I sort of wanted to get a game that uh, started off a bit quicker because you know Resident Evil does sort of have a, a bit of a waiting time before the game actually starts. So I thought, hey, you know, Mega Man S6, it's a good game. It starts off quick, a uh, good game to sort of demonstrate the controller's uh, main advantages with. So yeah, and now that we've actually launched an application and it's 3D accelerated, you'll notice that the little uh, Steam notification popped up in the bottom right earlier. Now we can actually hit the uh, Steam Overlay button and the overlay actually works. And since the overlay is now in use, whatever settings we set in controller configuration actually matter now. So we can actually go in and change the controller settings. What's cool about this is you can actually change this per game. Like for instance, I have uh, a configuration for Mega Man S6 here I have. I think this is my Resident Evil 1 configuration here. So I actually have multiple configurations. Uh, for different games. One thing I would recommend for Resident Evil or any game with tank controls is if you're going to be using the left pad to emulate the D-pad, I highly recommend setting the layout option of the left trackpad to crossgate. If you read the description for crossgate, it says a cross-shaped pad layout that prioritizes horizontal and vertical movement over the diagonals. This is incredibly good for tank control games in my experience. Uh, I've used this to play Grim Fandango Remastered with tank controls and Crossgate is a big a big plus for that game. Uh, so yeah, you can go ahead and make multiple configurations for different games. Uh, for Mega Man X, 6, the only real thing I've did to the default configuration is I've made it to where the left trackpad does not require click because I've gotten used to the left, left trackpad to where I don't actually have to click down to I don't really need that feedback. I can just sort of play and uh, yeah, it works pretty well. I have haptic intensity on high just because I like that feedback. You know, I like that little rumble it gives you. Uh, and I, of course, have the left stick in map to the uh, left trackpad just to put it there. I also have the right grip map to jump and left grip map to shoot. So, yeah, anyway, let's just go ahead and uh, hop right into the game here. Sort of showcase Mega Man S6 with the Steam Controller. Skip that. We don't, we don't need those damn cutscenes. Trying to play some Mega Man. When did Mega Man get cutscenes? I don't remember that of the classic side scrolling ones. Okay. There we go. So, yeah, as you can see, I'm now playing Mega Man S6 with the Steam Controller. And the grip buttons actually work really well for uh, side scrollers like this where you, you need to jump and shoot at the same time. The grip buttons actually work surprisingly well for this. It's actually very, very playable. Uh, 
it's really good for a sort of two button game. I can actually see the grip buttons uh, being really good for like NES emulators. And of course you can set up, setting up an NES emulator or a, uh, what is the slash button again? There we go, it's Y. Uh, setting up an S uh, SNES emulator or NES emulator or N64 emulator, Genesis emulator, etc. is pretty much the same steps, right? All you really got to do is find a good sort of application of uh, that works good for you. Really, it's just preference. Originally for this video, I wanted to use EPSXE, but unfortunately that uh, application, I couldn't get it to work properly, the Linux version, because I am running Arch Linux. Uh, the plugins weren't working for me, so I just said, okay, I'll just use PCSXR. Uh, and this emulator works fine. Sound emulation isn't perfect, but it works. And if you look at the uh, sprites, there's a bit of a weird lines going through. Mega Man runs. Uh, but yeah, it's nothing major. You know, the game is playable. This emula emulator also likes to show my mouse on screen, so I'm going to move that. Uh, that way my uh, webcam hides it. That is kind of annoying. I just very, just very much dislike that. And of course, you can play with the analog stick. This game does support uh, DualShock controls and you can play with the buttons as well. The buttons are fine, but I don't find that they, per personally, I don't really like them. Uh, I think I've said, and I said in my original review of the Steam Controller that the buttons just feel a bit too tiny for me and they're kind of awkward to press in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, I prefer using the left trackpad and the grip buttons for this game. Play a little bit more before I uh, end the video. Yeah, that's the cool thing about uh, being able to have multiple configurations is you can change it for each individual game, and uh, it's really cool actually. Like I know for Resident Evil, I had the right grip map to aim and left grip map to shoot. So yeah. Which I might have had uh, Resident Evil one of the grips map, map to uh, sprint and the other map to aim. I just used the buttons for shoot. I can't remember exactly. I kind of hate how you have to... Yeah, this boss fight's pretty easy. It is only the, uh, the first boss fight in the game. If you can even call it a boss fight. Oh, crap. Oh. Yeah, and once I... And since I've gotten used to the uh, left trackpad, I actually really... Uh, sort of It sort of works good as a D-pad replacement, in my opinion. Once you get used to sort of using it... Uh, used to uh, using it by moving it instead of having to click. But you sort of get used to that sort of style, it, uh, it works pretty well. And I guess if you wanted to, you could also map gyro functions. Uh, I don't really know any PlayStation one that would come in handy, but I don't know, you could if you wanted to. Maybe you're playing Crash and you want to shake the controller to uh, get him to spin or something weird like that or jump, then you could do that, I'm sure. And yeah, so that's uh, Mega Man S6 with the uh, Steam Controller. Uh, and yeah, as you can see, it works really good for PlayStation 1 emulation. I haven't really used any emulator outside of this, but I have seen videos of people actually using the Dolphin emulator, the Wii emulator with this, and actually using the controller's gyro as a pointer. And it looked like it worked really, really well. Uh, so yeah, you know, the Steam Controller is just so incredibly versatile. It fits all the basic needs and all your advanced functions as well. Uh, it's great for emulators, in my opinion, because, you know, as I just said, there I saw a video of some guy using this with a Wii emulator, and it worked fine. Like, he was, uh, he was playing Super Mario Galaxy, and he was just sort of doing this to shake the, uh, shake the pointer around real quick and uh, causing Mario to spin. And, you know, with no other controller, you can really do that with, you know what I mean? You can't, like, you really do that with an Xbox 360 controller. Uh, so, yeah, this controller is just incredibly versatile, and it's just an amazing device. Uh, so yeah, this has been uh, Keith, aka Ghost Squad 57. Thanks for watching this video. If you guys want to see me uh, possibly do more emulators in the future, please leave a comment. Uh, or if you guys want to see me play uh, a specific game with the Steam controller, just uh, leave a comment below and let me know. Okay, signing out.